continue to wrench on the sleds to get you ready to go racing here. We're back. Amsoil Snowcross National at Spirit Mountain, Duluth, Minnesota. That's the Logan Christian sled right there getting some air and shocks, huh? Yeah, getting ready for tomorrow. Hey, you want to find out where we're at? What's going on? You want to just talk to us? Tell us what we're doing right, doing wrong? Facebook.com slash ISOC ACSS. On the Twitter machine, Twitter.com slash Snowcross. You got Instagram. You got YouTube as well. So make sure you check us out on the social media. And don't forget, we are coming to a track near you. No doubt. Traveling all over. Of course, uh, when we get down here, we're off for a week. Then we go to Fargo for the Fargo Snowcross. Brought to you by... Buffalo River Race Park and uh, Country Cat. That's December 11th and 12th. We take off during the Christmas break, then we head down to Canterbury for the Furtex Snowcross Nationals, January 8th to 9th. Headed back out to one of your favorite places, Hawk, Deadwood, South Dakota. I spent, uh, what, three trips and, uh, to that area yeah, of the country That's what I heard you year. went out there with the family last summer. So. Did that, and then I went out there and uh, played at Sturgis with my band, so I had a great time. Go. January 23rd through the 20 or 22nd through the 23rd and you see the rest of the schedule there speaking of schedule well this is what's on our schedule next the junior 16 17 final as you see the drivers getting ready 15 of them Riley Vester the number one qualifier Tobias Larson Carson Allred Devin Malsin yep. Tyler Cole Wilbur or Matthew Wilbert Cole Schneider Kale Kalen then it's St. Lawrence and a Dutzman. That's the front row. Back row, we find Brodeur. Megan Brodeur racing in a number of classes this weekend. Uh, Peyton Hogan, Isaac Schlatteroff, Eli Epling, and Drew Johnson. That's right, Riley Bester, your number one qualifier on the 151. He's been fast all day long here in Duluth. You see the red lights flashing. We're going to get everybody back behind that starting line and get ready to go green. Again, the junior 16 and 17 year old final getting ready to go racing here in Duluth. There's your starter, man. He's got all the power in the world. If he thinks he likes it, he'll let him go racing. If not, he'll make him wait. And you he's know, not liking what he's seeing right now. You know, and the interesting thing about the starting line, and they talked about that earlier, is that they were trying to give him a buffer. So what that means is that they were painting the line about six inches behind the red beam. So, I mean, it, that would give them a chance to engage their clutch without breaking the beam. But if you broke the beam, uh, you're, you're quite a ways ahead of that line. Yeah, that the beam is broken. There. As you can see on the left-hand side there, somebody's got the beam broken. Looks like the red sled right there. No, maybe not. Line's still broken. Push back the black sled there. Just a smidge. There, 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 there. Yep, that's off. Okay, I think we're ready to go racing. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. The junior 16 yeah. and 17 year olds. Oh. It's in the starter's hands. And we are racing in Duluth. Up the hill they go. The junior 16, 17 final is on the track, and the 6 3 1 has the whole shot. Oh, it's like a freight train on that inside line, too. They were all working hard to work their way up. Look at Bester. He talked about hole shots earlier, trying to work his way up. He's going to position in second. This is going to be a good race. Carson all red with the hole shot, trying to hold off the fast qualifier as they head towards the Amsoil finish line. And we've got a new leader. Riley Bester takes it back. Look at the inside is Carson Allred. Can he make the move as they head up the hill? Well, just couldn't get enough drive to make that sled turn the way he wanted to in that corner, Hawk. That left Bester time to get it work around the outside, and he holds the lead. It's Bester, Allred, and Malsine. One, two, and three. The 6-3-1, one Allred looks to the inside, but don't forget Malsine in the 720 right there waiting for somebody to make a mistake. The leader headed towards right now Riley Bester puts another lap in in this feature race and he put a little more distance between he and the rest of the field he now has almost a two second lead over Carson Allred Malsine and then it's Callen in fourth Wilbert in fifth Larson Cole Schneider those are your top eight sleds over the Air Force flyway the battle has begun for second between Allred and Malsine Allred now holds that second spot Malsine looks to the inside on that 720 machine boy Devin tried to dig hard and squared up there to try to make up some ground 
on the sled of Carson Allred really wasn't able to make it work for him. He's still trying to make up some distance. Five laps to go in this race. Your leader continues to be Riley Bester. It's Allred, it's Malsin, it's Callan, and then Larson. Your top five right now as they head for the Air Force flyaway. There you see Allred. Watch him work to the outside. Malsin trying everything he can do to find a decent line. Now slingshotting outside, and you've seen him trying to get all that weight out in front of that ski to get that Arctic cat to turn in the corner. Just doesn't seem to want to work for him. He's still holding on to take and be in third place. Again, the lead, Riley Bester, there he is. He's got a three and a half second lead over all red in second, Malsin in third, and Kyle, uh, Kale Callen, I should say, in fourth, is about to start making his case for that third and final podium spot with Malsin. There's your leader, though, on the screen, making the dog led. The 151 heads down the, the hill once again. Kid looks like he hasn't even worked up a sweat just making laps around this racetrack. I'll tell you what, he is looking extremely strong. And I'll tell you what, you know, racing in both the sport and the junior 16, 17 class, I'll tell you what, I like what I'm seeing here. A lot of people, I'm sure, keeping an eye on this young man as he continues to race and continues to be dominant here in Duluth. There's the Air Force flyaway. There's your second place rider. That's the 631 of Carson Allred. Allred not giving up on winning this race. Got uh, Bester in his sights, but does he have enough laps left to reel in the leader? Doesn't look like it. The 151, although I'll tell you, Riley Bester now getting into some lab traffic. That's the 351 of Drew Johnson right there in 15th place. Bester dispatches of him quickly, but a little squirrely through that section right yeah, there. Yeah, he was right there. You know, this really shows why it's important when you've got good vision in front of you and nobody in front of you to make hay. I mean, really get out in front, work hard, make good lines, try to put some distance between you and the rest of the field so that when you do start running into lap traffic, you've got a little bit of a buffer to take and work with. And when you take and look at him right now, Bester, you know, still out in front by a little over four seconds. And he just got the white flag over that Amsoil finish line. One lap to go. That's the 720 of Devin Malsin. And I believe he just made the move on Tobias Leiston to take back that third spot. That's the battle for the fo final podium spot as we are less than a half a lap from it meaning everything, whether or not you're going to be on that podium and take home that hardware. Meanwhile, down the hill he comes. The Flames ready to fly for the 151. And your winner is Riley Bester in this junior 16 and 17 final. The 151 leads flag to flag and will take home the hardware. Here comes second place, Carson Allred, and the third place will go to De uh, Tobias Larson. Gets by Malsin for that final spot on the podium. Quite a race there at the end, and Larson makes that final move count. He will take the third and final podium spot just ahead of Malsin and Kale Callan, who will wind up fifth. You take a look at the rest of the field. Sixth place is going to be Matthew Wilbert. Then you've got Taylor Cole in seventh. It's St. Laurent in eighth. Cole Schneider in ninth. Dutzman in tenth. Then it's Hogan, Brodeur, Schlatteroff, Epling, and Drew Johnson winding up the field. What a great run for Riley Bester. Uh, I got a feeling that he's going to be visiting that uh, podium a number of times this year. I think you're right. Let's take a look at how it happened there. That's the 631 of Carson Allred with the whole shot. Great start for him, but you see the 151 right there up the hill, reeling him in, and eventually got around him and just took off and left him. Flames in the air, and Riley Bester takes the win out of Prior Lake, Minnesota. The good people of Fratalone Company's got to be very happy with their racer tonight. Drivers down, taking their helmets off again. Uh, a lot of dignitaries down into the night that are uh, working with some of our people. Well, look at that fox hat he's got on. That's a sweet, sweet hat. That is. That's old school. That looks like 70s era motocross hat that he's wearing. Retro, got to get the goggles on I there. Like that. So you can see those. There you go. Again, after we hand out the hardware, we'll be ready to go for Amsoil Pro Open Racing again. Round two of the Dominator coming up next. Then the semifinals and the finals as we are making our way for the first night of racing of the year in Amsoil Championship Snowcross powered by Ram. Again, a fantastic group of fans here tonight for this first night of racing. They certainly are. We want to remind people that racing starts again tomorrow morning. As, uh, it's a full day of... Uh, Full day of racing starting uh, at about 9.30. There'll be some practice starting about 8.30, but the racing starting at 9.30.
There'll be an opening ceremony as uh, we get going. Of course, tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. A lot of things taking place tomorrow, though. We invite you here early on. Let's introduce the top three drivers here in the Junior 16-17 class in their final in third place out of uh, Racing for Mystic Lubricants, FXR, Wick, Wicked Auto, and CNA Krosky on the number 166 Polaris, Tobias Larson. That's not Tobias Larson. No, that's that's Mills. There comes Tobias. Here he comes. That's not Tobias either. Everybody wants his hardware. That's not fair. They can't have it. He earned it. <laughs> there comes, there Tobias. comes Tobias. Tobias. That's the one. Yeah. All right. Congratulations. In second place, out of Gaylord, Michigan, racing for Artie Cat, Diesel Freak, Mega Power. He is on the number 631 Artie Cat, Carson Allred. And your winner. Oh, what a weekend. Out of Prior Lake, Minnesota, racing for Fratalone Company, FXR, Artie Cat, Speedworks, and Stud Boy, Riley Bester. Let's go down trackside to Chelsea again. Chelsea? Southside, FXR, Fox, Spy. Yeah. Congratulations, thank you. Let's move over to our second place rider, Carson Allry. Come on down by me. So Carson, you had another great race. Who would you like to thank today? I thank my mom, my dad, my sister, uh, Articat, Mike Coletti, uh, Diesel Freak, R12 Designs, and uh, Mega Power Sports. Well, congratulations, Carson. And up on top of the box, once again, Riley Bester. Two times out here, two times on top. How does it feel to start the season off so strong? Feels great. And who do you want to thank today? Uh, I'd like to thank the FXR, Mill for giving me this sweet gear, and Matt, uh, my mom, my dad, my sister, Articat, Mike Coletti, Spy, um, Rox, and everyone else. Well, congratulations, Riley. Get back out there, take some pictures. Congratulations. That is your junior 16, 17. I'm sending it back to the booth. We got Amsoil Dominator coming up next. You got that right. I'll tell you what, coming up, guys, round two of the Amsoil Dominator, followed by the semifinal and the final. There are your matchups. Tucker Hibbert, Stale Egan, that's your first matchup of this next round. Tim Tremblay, David Jonas, another great matchup. Ross Martin, Lincoln Lemieux, who had some sled issues there at the end of his opening round win. But the one I can't wait to see, Kyle Pauline versus Cody Cam. The fourth matchup of this second round is going to be a great one. Yeah, it's going to be a couple of the new Polaris is going head to head. And of course, a couple of competitors that uh, have been on the racetrack a number of times. If you look at them, of course, Kyle Pauline ended up in third place in points last year. Cody Cam injured, ending up in ninth place. But it'll be interesting to see what they can do head to head. The only racer in the second round that didn't automatically qualify is Stale Egan. He had to race his way in twice today, qualify in qualifying, and then beat Corin Todd in the first round, which he did. Let's see what he's got for Tucker Hibber, shall we? You know, that's the interesting thing. Like you said, it just shows that if you're in that top part of the seating, you know, uh, you're strong. No and, doubt. Uh, you, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. So. It's going to be happening right after a short break. It's the Amsoil Dominator Cup. Here in Duluth, we'll be right back with more Amsoil Championship Snowcross.